Great job, vocal ensemble. I think we need to give them another round of applause. Good morning, church. Um, I don't think I could have picked a better song to go along with what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, as they were singing this song from the 121st Psalm, uh, we know David knew where his help come from. And uh, a part of us getting help from the Lord is prayer, right? Uh, so I'm going to begin with a question. On a scale of 1 to 10, how important do you think prayer is? 10, right? Does anybody think it's not a 10? It's an 11? <laughs> prayer is very important. Prayer is what connects us to God. Um, and so we're going to be um, spending some time here in the book of James, chapter 5. The book of James, chapter 5, uh, beginning with verse 13. And as you are flipping over to that verse, let's open up in prayer. Father, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for our help does come from you, Lord. We thank you for always being there for us 24-7, Lord. We thank you for that bond that we have with you that connects us to you at any time, Lord. Uh, but help us not to pray only when we need help, Lord. Help us to pray prayers of thanksgiving, Lord. Help us to give thanks to you always, Lord. I pray that you be with me as um, I deliver this message, Lord. Um, help me to be an instrument for you, Lord. Uh, be with all in the congregation, Lord, especially those who don't know you, Father. Be with us at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. James chapter 5, starting with verse 13. Everybody who's there, say amen for me. Amen. All right. The prayer of faith. T today our title is Fixing Our Eyes on Jesus, The Power of Prayer. The Power of Prayer. I'm going to begin with verse 13. Is anyone of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Amen? Amen? So, just going over these verses, uh, our first point here, starting with verse 13, when we are in trouble, we need to do what? Pray. 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 Now, how often when we're in trouble do we do everything else except pray? We try to handle it on our own. We try to call... Uh, Robbie and Mike and all of our friends and then after a while we say hold on I, I didn't even pray about this yet anybody here guilty of that so the first thing we need to do verse 13 is any one of you in trouble he should pray and if we go back in the Old Testament uh, you don't have to go there, but in Genesis 18, uh, we read about several uh, men in the Old Testament who prayed. In Genesis 18, Abraham prayed for Sodom. Remember what was about to happen to Sodom and Gomorrah? And remember Abraham's prayer? Abraham prayed. If we go back to Genesis 18... Starting with verse 16. When the men got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom, and Abraham walked along with them to see them on their way. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just 
so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin is so grievous, that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went toward Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you, will not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, if I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again. Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what, what if the number of the righteous is five less than 50? Will you destroy the whole city because of five people? If I find 45 there, he said, I will not destroy it. And this back and forth goes on and on. But Abraham was praying on behalf of the people. The people were in trouble. God was about to deal with them harshly. And we know what happened next. If we go to Genesis 32, Jacob prayed. Remember when he ran from his brother, Esau? Genesis 32. Uh, let's start with verse... Let's start with verse 7. In great fear and distress, Jacob divided the people who were with him into two groups, and the flocks and herds and camels as well. He thought, if Esau comes and attacks one group, the group that is left may escape. Then Jacob prayed, O God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, O Lord, who said to me, go back to your country and your relatives, and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan, but now I have become two groups. Save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me, and also the mothers with their children. So not only Abraham prayed, Jacob prayed in times of trouble. Moses also prayed for the people. Exodus 32. Remember the golden calf when the people were worshiping the golden calf? Let's go to verse 7 in Exodus. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down, because your people whom you brought up out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. O Lord, he said, Why should your anger burn against your people? whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out, to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger. Relent and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all this land I promised them, and it will become, and it will be their inheritance forever. Look at Moses quoting the Lord's own words when he's trying to get him to stop. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. So, what did all three of these men have in common? When times of trouble came towards them, what did they do? They prayed. So we should latch on to this as well. This is not just an Old Testament thing. This is still today. We still can pray when we're in trouble. Agree or disagree? Should we pray when we're in trouble? 
Is anything too small for God? Is anything too big for God? Whatever you're going through, you need to pray. That's number one. Secondly, let's continue reading. Uh, verse 14, the original text, James 5. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Second point, let church leaders pray for you. Now, you may say to yourself, uh, I don't know how to pray, or my prayers aren't being answered. We have appointed and anointed church leaders in this church. Everybody knows who the pastor is, right? Everybody, does everybody know who the deacons are in the church? Not all of them? Can all of our deacons stand up for me? All deacons, active and inactive. Second point says, let the church leaders pray for you. I want you to take a look around. These are people who are called by God. We didn't fill out an application and do a job interview. God called all of us. We all can pray for you. Thank you, guys. I'm a deacon. They're deacons. Pastors, the pastor. Seek a church leader. Now, when you're seeking a church leader, uh, you, may not, you, may, you may not be able to uh, relate to all of us, but that's why there's so many of us. I have my own style. They have their own style. If you don't want to come talk to me, that's fine. Find somebody in leadership. Now, when you go to them, they may not be as funny as I am, <laughs> or as handsome, but, um, but we are all called by God. We are all called by God, and we can all pray for you, no matter what you're going through. Our invitation time at the end of the church service, it's for you. We're here to pray for you, no matter what you're going through. And I think every deacon who just stood up would agree that we're here and we're available for you. Amen, deacons? All right. So um, let church leaders pray for you. Our pastor, as Brother Tom said, he's available 24-7. Even though he's on vacation right now, I can bet you if you called him right now, he would pray for you on his vacation. Do you guys think he would do that? But leave him alone, though, this week, okay? <laughs> Let pastor have his vacation and his rest time. Uh, so church leaders, we have a special calling by God. Um, in the name of the Lord, uh, God can heal through the prayers of an elder. Um, sometimes this does include the oil, as it's referring to. Um, back in the day, the oil was used for medicinal purposes, but... It's not the oil that does the healing. God always does the healing. Okay? There's nothing special about the oil or the person doing the prayer. God does the healing. Okay? And we're talking about when we're talking about healing in this uh, in this par in this chapter. Um, it's not only for sickness. It's also for spiritual sickness. Okay? Some of us are very spiritually sick today very spiritually sick. We're here for you. And that brings me to my third point. Because you may not, you may not, you may say, I don't know how to pray for myself, or I don't want to go talk to one of them deacons. I don't want pastor to talk to me. That's fine. Find somebody. Somebody that you trust. Somebody, somebody that is grounded in their word. Confess your sins and hurts to each other. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. Because first we talked about praying to God for yourself. And then we talked about um, going to one of the church leaders. 
and confessing your sins and hurts to each other, that involves now letting you in my world. Now, every Sunday we come to church and we greet each other and we say, how are you doing today? And what's the standard answer we always get? Well or fine, right? Do you think all of us are well and fine, really? Do you think that's just something that we say out of habit? I know one thing that I like to do, I'm bad. Um, when, I, when I go to Publix, how many people shop at Publix? Or shopping is a pleasure? Okay, yeah, I love it too. <laughs> Buy one, get one, freeze. Uh, uh, but have you ever noticed when you go to check out at Publix, at my Publix at least, what do they ask you at the cashier? Were you able to find everything? One thing that I like to do, I like to mess with them. When they say, um, were you able to find everything? I say, no, I wasn't. And a couple of, some of them are good. Some of them, they remembered all their training and they know what they're supposed to say. But some of them, when I say, I wasn't able to find everything, they say, uh, 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 and they just start stuttering. Because why do you think that is? They don't really mean, they're just saying it out of habit. Right? They don't, they, it's just a part of their job. When we see each other, do we, when we ask, how are you doing today, do we really mean it? Do we really want that answer? Because some of us, as we said, are hurting. Physically, spiritually, emotionally. And I believe a lot of people have masks on. A lot of people have masks on that are covering hurts, that are covering things that we're going through. Look at this picture up there. Now, we have a lot of women in our church today that put, up a lot of, put on a lot of makeup and things like that, <laughs> like one or two pounds. <laughs> the same way that they're putting on makeup in the car, I believe before we come in the church, I believe a lot of people put a mask on. A lot of people cover what they're going through. And the third point about confessing your sins to one another, now I have to let you in my world. And that's a tough thing to do. We don't like people to be close to us. We don't like people to know exactly what's going on in our lives. So when we say, how are you doing today? What's the easiest thing to say? I'm fine. Some of us are not fine. Some of us, some of us have that mask on. Some of us are going through some financial things. And if you ask me how I'm doing, it's easier to say I'm fine than to say, you know what? I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. I just lost my job. I don't know how I'm going to feed my kids. Are we ready to hear that from somebody? When you ask them, how are you doing today? How are you? It's easier to put the mask on. I may be struggling with a family issue. I'm not getting along with somebody in my family. You ask me how I'm doing today, what's the easy thing for me to say? What's the easy way out? I'm fine. Not, I haven't spoken to my mom in two weeks. Me and my wife were sleeping in separate rooms in the house. Who's ready to hear that? If somebody says that to you, are you ready to respond to that? Do we really want to know when we ask, how are you doing? I can be going through something at work. I can be going through something at school. I can be going through something at church. Are we, ready to, are we really ready to tap into each other's lives? Think about that. That's an opportunity to pray, right? Exactly. That's an opportunity to pray for somebody right then and there. But remember, that involves getting personal. Um, 
So if we truly want to be forgiven, uh, we need to confess. Talking about spiritually hurting, we can be going through, we can be going through a stronghold, something that's really got a hold of us. You know what, deacon? You know what, pastor? I've been struggling with this sin for two years, and I can't let it go. I can't let it go. Now, if you pray for yourself, um, you may not always be able to hear. Sometimes God puts other people in our lives for a purpose. Do you believe that? God can speak to us through other people because sometimes when we're going through something, we have a way of manipulating our prayers or manipulating things that we hear from God. I spoke to somebody recently who was, who was having some marital issues. And she said that um, my prayer is that I pray, God, show me a sign. Should I leave or should I go? Should I leave or should I go? I mean, you know what I mean. Should I leave or should I stay? <laughs> Thank you, Sterling. <laughs> should I leave or should I stay? And she said one time she was praying that, and right after she was done, a divorce commercial came on for a divorce lawyer. She said, thank you, God. Now, now, if we're praying on our own, can we manipulate what just happened to say, you know what? God wants me to divorce. God wants me out of this relationship. We know that that doesn't come from God. Amen? Sometimes we need that other person. We need that other person. Sometimes we manipulate our prayers. We manipulate what we're hearing because we're in the thick of it. We're going through something, a financial struggle, a struggle with an addiction. We may be physically hurt or sick. We have some people here today that they barely made it to church. Barely made it to church. You're not going to know it, though, because what, what do we have on? We have on that mask. I'm fine today. I'm doing good. Everything's okay. Are we really ready to pray for one another? Really ready to pray? Think about it. So when we're in trouble, we need to pray. Um, <clears throat> we may be in a financial struggle. And we say, you know what? I know this, I, I gotta, I know I gotta, I should write this tithe check, but these bills, they have to come first. And if we're going through a financial struggle, if we're in the middle of it, we can manipulate our prayer. We can manipulate different things and say, you know what? That's just an Old Testament thing. God. That tithing thing, that's outdated. I don't need to tithe. If we're going through a financial struggle, can we, can we finagle that situation to make it seem like we're justified by not tithing? Ooh, we got quiet on the tithing thing. <laughs> Woo! Is tithing only an Old Testament thing? Sometimes we need other people. James, the writer here, is telling us, confess your sins and hurts to each other. Sometimes we can be dead wrong. We can read the Bible and we can see a verse one way and it means something completely different than what we read it to be. I read the Bible and I pray with three guys every day. And I go in there sometimes and I'm like, okay, I got this, I read the scripture. I know what it means, and then we get on the phone, 
And there's Brother Ludrick to rebuke me. <laughs> Say, no, Emmanuel, it's not like that. <laughs> but do we need that, though? We need correction from other brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to sharpen one another. The only way we're going to get the sharpening is if we do the confessing. And the only way we're going to do the confessing is if we let out the real us. Next time you come to church and you ask somebody how they're doing, you may want to assess the situation. What is God telling you? Is God telling you, you know what, something really isn't right there. But most of the time we feel it. God says it to us, but what do we do? Okay, they said they're fine, so I'll just leave it alone. Is that a caring family of God? What would a caring family of God do? Respond to that need, okay? Last point I'm going to make. Now you may say, I don't want, I don't want pastor in my business, I don't want the deacons in my business, I don't even want other people in my business because um, I don't know what their intentions are. But that's why it says the prayer of a what kind of person? Righteous person. A righteous person is powerful and effective. What's the key word in that sentence right there? Righteous. I'm not telling everybody, go give all your news to the whole world. That's not what I'm saying. We look for spiritual leaders, and we look for what kind of people? Righteous people. Because I'm going to tell you a secret. This is where I got to pause and think before I say this. Everybody that you think is righteous ain't righteous. Ain't. Everybody at your school isn't righteous. Everybody in your family ooh, isn't righteous. Everybody at your job isn't righteous. Oh, it's going to hurt me to say this one. I got to say it, right? Everybody in your church isn't righteous. <laughs> we have people that may have an ulterior motive. People that say they want to pray for you. Really, all they want to do, be in your business, right? Hey, what's going on? Man, I heard you was going, look, can I pray for you, brother? What's going on? That's it? Nothing else going on? Everybody in your church isn't righteous. That one hurt me to say. But it's true. Look for righteous people. Pray to God. Who are the righteous people? Who do I come in contact with? God, show me who these people are. You can pray for yourself. You can pray with the spiritual leaders. You can pray with other people that are righteous. We have so many different options here, but prayer is important. Amen? Amen. So, um, okay, we went over how do we know what a righteous person is. Oh, no, we didn't. How do we know what a righteous person is? Um, is it how, how they dress? Is it how they speak? Possibly. Is it because they can recite every Bible verse from Genesis to Revelation? No. But I thought those were the key things to look for. Is it because they come to church every Sunday? Is it because they sing in the choir? How, right? Okay. Let's throw out some things, some good things. Uh, how do you, we know that people are righteous? First off, 
I believe God is going to speak to you. Say, you know what? I'm getting a good vibe from this person. Not a good vibe. I shouldn't say the good vibe, but I feel something from this person, something special, something from God. How is this person's family, their family life? How do they speak to people? What are the fruits of their labor? Do they really pray for you? Do they follow up? Do they just say they're going to pray for you and just forget about you? Do they lend a helping hand? Do they go over and above? Do they only do the bare minimum? How do we know what a righteous person is? Is it hard to tell sometimes? It is. So we got to be careful. It's hard to tell because some people put that mask on picture up again, Jasmine. Some people have one or what? They look, they look real good. They say the right things. They may look righteous. They may smell righteous. <laughs> but we have a lot of wolves and what? Sheep clothing. Be careful. Don't, I'm not up here saying divulge everything to everybody. We're looking for what kind of people? Righteous people. Don't fight this battle alone. We have people in here who are sick. We have people in here who are going through a lot of things. Look for righteous people. And the prayer of a righteous person is what? Powerful and effective. Who wants powerful and effective prayer in their lives? So let me ask you guys today. I'm going to start with this side. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> Woo! Let's go to the middle. How are you guys doing today? I got a sleepy. I got a lot of fun. Okay. This side. How are you guys doing today? Yeah, I heard some things. Remember now, going forward, I challenge you guys. When you ask somebody, how are you doing today? Let God use you, because we know that everybody isn't fine. Oh, I forgot the choir. Choir, how are you guys doing today? Okay, I got a school that's very stressful. All right. Okay. Um, so just closing, prayer is very powerful. Let's use the tools here that God has given us. God has given us, first and foremost, himself. We can go to him anytime, Right? He's never going to not answer when we call him. We can call him in the day. We can call him at night. Uh, he's given us spiritual leaders. He's given us our pastor. He's given us our deacons. He's given us other spiritual leaders. You may be from another church, spiritual leaders in your church. And he's also given us each other, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? Um. I read a story recently about this woman who was diagnosed with cancer, and it was cancer in her ankle, and she, she was supposed to have surgery. They were supposed to amputate her foot off, um, and three times, three times they, they couldn't do the surgery for, you know, fight with the insurance or some other reasons. Three times, uh, they said, you know, we can't do the surgery. They put it off. So after the third time, she said, you know what? I, I think this is a sign from God. And so she said, you know what? I'm not having the surgery. I'm just going to continue to pray. Um, about three months later, she went back to get a scan of her, of her ankle, and all the cancer was gone. And the doctors... The doctors was like, you know, this, this doesn't make sense. You know, like, I went to medical school, and this, this, this doesn't happen like this. She said she attributed everything to her prayers to God for her healing. She knew that it was God that healed her. 
Should we be surprised at a story like this? Does God still heal? Yes. Has God ever healed you? Yes. That was very weak. Has God ever healed you? Yes. Has God ever come through for you? Yes. Is prayer important? Yes. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today, Lord. We thank you for the power of prayer, Lord. We thank you for you always being there for us and that we have that connection to you at any time, Lord. We thank you for um, our spiritual leaders in this church, Lord. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for all the deacons, Lord. We thank you for just our attitude of service, Lord. Help us to continually uh, respond to the needs of others, Lord. I pray, Lord, thanking you for um, just our brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, who we can also go to, Lord. Uh, I thank you that we can pray um, and speak to one another, Lord. But I pray, Lord, that we uh, can take our masks off today, Lord. Help us to show our true feelings, our true hurts, Lord, so that we can be healed, Lord, as the writer in James put it, Lord. Help us to look to you, Lord, Help us to use what you've um, put on this earth for us, Lord. Help us to uh, reach out to the people that you've put in our paths, Lord. Help us, Lord, um, in all that we go through, Lord. I pray for all of those who are sick today, Lord. I pray for all of those who barely made it to church today, Lord, who are aching, Lord, or who got a bad report from the doctor. I pray for all of those who are spiritually sick today, Lord, those who have given up hope, Lord, who have lost their faith, Lord, those who are struggling with an addiction, Lord. I pray for all of those, um, those who are married, Lord, and have um, strayed away from their partners, Lord, whether physically or emotionally, Lord. I pray that you be with us today, Lord, as a church. Help us, Lord, to draw closer to you, Lord. Help us to do so in prayer. Prayers to you, prayers to our leaders, Lord, and prayers to one another. Help us to respond to needs, Lord, of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Help us not to be fake, Lord. Help us to want to be healed. And we thank you, Lord, for you are our healer. Be with us during this invitation time, Lord. And anybody who's hurting, Lord, anybody who wants to take their mask off, Lord, we pray that you be with them today. Give them courage, Lord. Give them courage to come forth and uh, seek prayer, Lord, and healing. Thank you, Father, for using me today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.